Welcome to another episode of Data Lab Dialogues. My name is Thomas Madsen. I'm heading the Experience Center in Copenhagen. Today, though, we are at Gunfoss in a studio, as you can see. Uh, this is a first for us. Uh, we drove all the way to, to Bjergbro this morning and are happy to be here. With me today, of course, I have Karl Bergström again. Yeah, nice, uh, Thomas. And what a place and what mics we yeah. have here. <laughs> Better than what we have at home. Oh, yes, absolutely. This, yeah. is, this is a new setting for sure. With us today, we have Jakob Rød, uh, that is Department Manager of Development in uh, in Grundfos. And welcome to you. Thank you. Well, I should say thanks for hosting us, Jakob. <laughs> welcome to you too. <laughs> <laughs> we have leveled. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we we most of the podcast has been out of the experience center, but uh, but uh, I I think uh, five or six or so we've mm. visited customers and mm. and with this uh, experience in mind, I think we should do it more often for yes. sure. Yeah. Yes, we should. But uh, before we kick it off, uh, Jakob, uh, you went to uh, to visit us actually yesterday in in Copenhagen. So it was a long day for you uh, oh, yeah. yesterday. You you uh, you joined us uh, at SAP uh, together with uh, four students uh, out of Aalborg Universitet that you have had through a uh, program here at Grundfos, which I think sounds really exciting. Uh, uh, but uh, but uh, but Jakob, uh, is is there enough? people at the uh, different types of STEM universities in, in Denmark that know about SAP? Well, we had the experience firsthand last year when we interviewed uh, candidates for the for these four positions. Um, and I think it's fair to say that the exper- well, the knowledge and awareness about SAP was close to zero. Mm-hmm. So I think that calls for all of us in the market, uh, SAP, Confos, and everyone else to... Uh, join the journey on creating awareness of SAP. So we have future talents uh, to recruit on. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's it's. Uh, I, I've been with SAP for a long, long time. I remember back in the 90s, we, we at Lund's University in Sweden, we set up something. But this is something that we need to go on doing yeah. for a long period. Absolutely. So I really salute that. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think it's a common interest, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, you are not the only one that voiced <laughs> this uh, concern. Uh, uh, so while SAP do indeed have a, a big ecosystem and a lot of uh, uh, customers, of course, with with many many employees that work with SAP, we also hear that there is a uh, significant challenge in attracting new talent uh, to work with SAP solutions. So uh, so well hopefully your initiatives mm-hmm. will work uh, uh, to, to improve that. Yeah, but also may I add that it's actually been, we have all the power um, for recruiting normally, right? Mm-hmm. You do too. But we also have to, um, experience doing, the, doing this process that we actually could benefit from utilizing each other. Uh, mm-hmm. And that's been great support for you m- from your um, employer branding as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We have, the, we have the tools, we have the information, we know w- how important SAP is for the market, our conference included. Yeah. And it's fun. It is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so one of the students yesterday gave me the suggestion to just drop by on universities for three hours, now and then, uh, in the in the afternoon, early evening, uh, to give a talk and bring some pizzas and perhaps a couple of beers. Uh, and, uh, and, and why not do that? So I think uh, we will definitely work on that and hopefully we can bring a few clients, um, it might even be you, Jakob, uh, to, to explain about your, your experience on, on, on use of SAP. But well, hopefully we'll, we'll hear a little bit about that today as well. Uh, uh, but before we start, Jakob, perhaps you could introduce yourself. Who are you and, uh, and what's your current role here at Grundfos? Yes, um, my name is Jakob Rode Jonstrup. I'm a manager at uh, Grundfos IT. I've been with Grundfos for 24 years, started out in the e-business days with a product catalog and uh, turned into being an extranet and then grow into become a department and that's where I started as a department manager. Later that turned, uh, that had a broad broad integration and interfacing to SAP as SAP hosts quite a bit of the e-commerce world, at least data-wise and process-wise. So when you're saying that, did you have SAP back uh, 24 when when you were kicking off? Yep. And um, then I had the opportunity to take upon the responsibility for the SAP and SAP integration developments. And I've been heading that for, I I think, 15 years or so. Time flies. <laughs> but, well, it's been a great experience and it still is. There's uh, been loads of development that is, oh, for me personally, for the department, for the area as such. Um, 
we globalized during that period of time as well, getting more centers and having employees uh, all over the world. And um, then lately it's been with the S4 journey and uh, then recently the uh, B2B journey. Uh, mm. Recently, that's a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, okay. But still we are uh, safely on S4 and we are now maturing in the area of B2B quite heavily. Fantastic. Well, how was the, you say, safely on S4? Uh, was it a bumpy journey or uh, can you tell us a little bit? I about think that, that was place? one of the things that we, um, we were hit by COVID during that period of time. Ah, and that yeah. means everyone was working, forced to work from home, right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> we had the concern that going live on S4, being remote all of us, whether that would be too high a risk. Uh, but I can honestly say we, uh, that uh, it was a huge success. We had um, it required quite a bit of a preparation, a couple of years, mm. quite some hours. <laughs> <laughs> and um, within my area, there was smaller bumps, but there was nothing, uh, no business interruption as such. And now being responsible for the integration area, I can literally say that after a couple of one or two days, we had normal operations. Okay, and that's considering that we kicked down the system for five days, um, and the integrations are failing during that period of time, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and then you turn them on. Then we turn them on, and then it all starts uh, pulling in. And after, I think even within the first day, we could see okay, this is this is operating. Mm -hmm. We just like if we had the system down anyway, then yeah. uh, normal normal problems. Yeah. so to speak. Normal that error. that yes. is uh, interesting to hear because when we're out speaking to customers who are considering to moving, the integrations is something everybody's concerned about because now we are changing this. We're going to S4. Of course, I guess you prepared for this, but but uh, what I hear you saying is that yeah, we, it worked. Worked. we can say it worked <laughs> afterwards, right? So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the way you explain it, it reminds me of uh, the movie about the Apollo 13, when they, you know, are about to start up again after being dormant for a while, going back, you know, they needed to find the right, uh, the right approach, the right order uh, to, to switch on the things. Uh, and, and is there also the right order to switch on the integrations? That was, um, yeah. but it was, it was uh, well conducted. Uh, it's not my effort, <laughs> um, but it was really well conducted. <coughs> And then the, I mean, Gunfos around the, the S4, the surrounding systems, they kept going like any other business to to support Gunfos business. So the, I guess they were queuing up uh, messages uh, outside. And uh, yeah, and then when we opened up, then they were entering. Of course, that system was busy at that time, but um, that sort of like evened out during I think one or two, one day or so. Then. Mm. Uh, W Maybe even faster. I, I don't literally actually don't recall other than I was happy afterwards. Yeah. Okay. That's <laughs> the which, which, thing. which version did you uh, start up uh, on S4? S4, was it 1909 or, 19. or, twen 19 or 2010? No. I think it was 18. I, I actually don't recall now because we just had to, this weekend we had an upgrade to 2021. So okay. Uh, ah, okay. <laughs> So you have upgraded as well. That uh, is uh, awesome. patched. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And upgrades uh, was that then easier in a normal ECC upgrade? Now you've tried it for once. Uh, well, the preparation from the last couple of times has made us mature, but uh, <laughs> and it is. Uh, we went live, and there was main, uh, minor defects, no uh, limited business impact. Um, mm. So I think yes. Uh, one of the things that also made that happen is that we're maturing as we go along, but that's still a journey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome, but but uh, let's uh, take a step back then. Uh, uh, your role as as a manager in IT, what does that entail? What what's a day in the life of of a guy like you? Are you doing Scrum Master jobs or stakeholder management, or can you tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about that? Yeah, well, what I do for a living is basically making people grow. Mm. And um, growing with the new technologies, where and uh, taking utilizing them, creating awareness of it uh, inside the department, but also in daily life as a manager, it's also about um, making sure that our colleagues in the uh, in the IT departments uh, that we utilize the right uh, technologies, that we evaluate which approach to take and which um, 
for which purpose? And so here by utilizing the best possible of SAP that we can. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's a part of it, growing uh, the people in the, my department, but also uh, creating awareness in the organization about what op- opportunities do we have. Right. And when you say opportunities, what would that be? There, well, SAP provides quite a lot of opportunities, uh, <laughs> so these will be the ones, but also things like the new technologies, there are uh, ways of, well, we, API management is one of the latest ones where, okay, the SAP has a has uh, one approach on that and there's an uh, alternative approach on that and, um, well, sharing what SAP can do. So we get a, a solid evaluation of which approach to take, when to use what. Mm-hmm. And, and and that because that's something I'm I'm struggling with, uh, and how I'm uh, wondering how you're coping with it, because now there are so many options. There are or there are so many. The toolbox is big. It's become bigger. It was easier when it was old ECC days. There was mm. one, and now uh, are, are you evaluating uh, that this new feature? Let's test it out, or how how how. We're doing that too, but it is also a matter of that. Uh, I see, yes, there are more options, <coughs> but one of the beautiful things is that, that SAP strategy overall is now consolidating on BTP. Mm. That means all the uh, island solutions that we're seeing, we're now potentially capable of uh, consolidating them in the BTP, so we have one platform for that particular purpose mm. when we talk about SAP. There are alternatives out there, and there are alternatives to be evaluated. That can be, uh, And it's not necessarily competing, but it's... Um, mm. But one platform for one purpose, basically. Yeah. Yeah. But you're fully right uh, that uh, the options are more, complexity is higher, and I think uh, if I'm looking at it, well, we need to decide wisely because some of them will die, some new ones will come. It's a matter of betting on the right ones. Yeah. Yes. Can you uh, tell us a little bit about your team? Uh, what what sort of development do you do in that team? Well, we're, <coughs> we're responsible for the uh, SAP development uh, cross uh, business areas. So that means uh, sales, uh, supply chain, it means HR, and it's uh, and finance, of course. Uh, and the interesting part is that that uh, now start with S4, also going to change instead of silos. So that's also a matter of then uh, with the Fury journey that you're mm-hmm. enabling business roles, then you, my team is then developing that. Uh, the particular things where we want to enhance SAP or differentiate ourselves uh, from what, where SAP is good, but want to differentiate ourselves in uh, in ways that can make Confus work better, um, and that can go across the areas. Yeah, okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. And here we are choosing and selecting the uh, ways of the, uh, solving the development uh, together with the functional consultants. Yeah. So, so that is a change that has been brought in by yeah. the S4 upgrade? And uh, it's always, it always been like, like that. that. Okay. But, but the, di- <laughs> the difference with S4 is that we're still working with the uh, SDS, SD, finances, finance, and so forth. Mm. But we also see with the Fury journey that we are now combining these in change instead. And that also implies um, ways of working mo- more collaborative cross areas because you you need to have, if you have an approval process in purchase, Financially, that impacts, right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Uh, therefore, these you cannot have an, a request app without an approval app, mm-hmm. for instance. Mm-hmm. So it calls for more collaboration, but it doesn't. It hasn't, uh, in that sense, changed the uh, governance around it. But it does uh, give us opportunities now to work a little bit more um, adaptive. I would call it, um, in the sense that we we can now change uh, the front end without necessarily changing uh, backend processes. Okay. <coughs> and that is a freedom that uh, we are still to, we are utilizing it, but we are still to get, uh, see the full benefit of it and utilize uh, utilize it for uh, even more. Yeah, so so it, yeah, you can adapt uh, and, and on, on different layers independent of each other, but are you using this capability to also introduce solutions at a faster pace? So have you changed the way you release software, so to speak? Yeah, we started out when we, um, during the S4 journey, we actually had the code remediation done externally. Mm -hmm. And that meant my team could focus on new technologies. And here we built up together with uh, colleagues, we built uh, up a Fury Factory concept. We thought, okay, we have these, at that point I think it was 14,000 standard apps. (laughs) Well, rolling them out, that needs to be smooth. 
And we built a for- fuel fo- factory concept so we had a, a lean and uh, effective way of, if that was requested, then we enabled the business role, including the uh, not only the functionality requested, but the business role as such, because that ties in together, mm-hmm. and making that smooth. Yeah. And that means we could do it within, I think it was it's still within a day. Oh, um, okay. But just taking one step back, just to understand your, where you were coming from. So you did a uh, brownfield, you converted your system into S4. Did then the users enter at that point in time into Fiori or were it then no, a, a business as usual, um, more or less? And afterwards you have introduced new things yeah we actually introduced fury to a smaller extent on r3 there mm-hmm. were some some options there mm-hmm. but i'm glad glad you asked because we actually we did a one-to-one migration mm-hmm. that was mitigating risks yeah. because it's a rather big thing to mm-hmm. to do a blue uh, a greenfield a greenfield approach yeah and from there on we started utilizing it. and it turns out that in some areas uh, sap and the business is more mature on fury than others so we have had a quite strong pace on uh, supply chain and other places are focusing mm-hmm. quite a bit on also cloud solutions. Uh, so in that sense, they are not necessarily, they're moving on the cloud journey rather than the Fury journey. Mm-hmm. But we're also focusing right now on that these things go in hand in hand as we go look ahead because workflows and um, the capabilities to have one UI mixing different kind of uh, say solutions from SAP mm-hmm. with the uh, on-prem stuff. Well, that that goes hand in hand, but we we are uh, still working, so to speak, platform by platform, mm-hmm. but we also see that these will eventually mix. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> That's the journey we're on. Yeah. And yeah, 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 <laughs> so I mentioned, and, and, and I mentioned the Fury journey, now we're on the BTP journey. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, listening to what other customers are doing, those who have a Strong history, the operating model hasn't really changed. It makes great sense to, to convert because you have a lot of investments yeah. in that solution. And then uh, grow grow, grow on that. And I think also the S4 journey was a huge opportunity for cleaning up. I think we, uh, we basically had 50% of our custom code not used. And um, so it, it, it uh, yeah, turned it, out but like But it, it comes by nature because we have had a history of, uh, I don't know, 15, 20 years or yeah. so, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, <coughs> and here, re, well, refactoring and uh, cleaning up, that was a really, really good exercise. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, the Fury journey in that sense is also, well, it's um, it started there mm-hmm. in, in principle, but it's also... Uh, a rather big change organizational wise if you want to go for, for that because it, you just we have 19,000 employees you just don't go out here here you go here's a new no, uh, no. new feature mm, mm. Uh, it would be nice but uh, and it is easier with fury because it's to a large extent self explaining but it's still a change it's, it's a new still way still a change yeah, yeah. And, and how did you manage that so i mean of course you are not well it was easy yet. it was a one to one so that was Business I know, as usual. I know. But then, it okay, was not but easy, then let's but take, take the next step. <laughs> yeah. then. You are introducing Fury and, and you are doing it, as, as I understand it, process by process somehow. So, um, yeah, so we actually had the thought when we were live on S4, then we wanted to, uh, we prepared for the journey of uh, going for Fury. And also, per recommendation by SAP, we, we looked at okay, one project for all areas. But that turns out to be not necessarily well, not necessarily feasible because we're moving on different maturity levels and m- different focus areas, and there are some interdependencies also on business requirements and uh, cloud journeys and so forth. So we d- we have decided to uh, go for more uh, s- smaller chunks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can see the benefit of a big one, but um, having the S four as a big project uh, and then going out and say, well, we need another one of that size that yeah. might, that that would not be beneficial for the business. They have requirements and needs they uh, they need to have as well. One has to be business Impaler. driven. It cannot be technical driven. No. No. But I think we're on the right track mm. and uh, we are moving um, in a reasonable pace. Mm. We'll always, I think that's natural for anyone, we'd al- always like to move faster, but uh, mm. I think it's, uh, it's in a good, good shape and a good balance. What defines these smaller chunks? Um, is it business? Is it you? Or, or can you give an example, perhaps? 
Well, it's um, it's like a snowball effect. If you start in uh, in supply chain area with one specific business role, there comes other ones as well, right? Mm. Mm. And uh, it's really taking off there because they saw the benefit, uh, have seen the benefit of it. So they are now asking for more, and okay. then logically, there we launch more. Okay, so you've you've managed to get some advocates in the business yes. on, on on adopting Fury, and that's yep. kind of. Yeah, the snowball is rolling now. Yeah, yeah, in that area, and then we are looking at other areas as well. But there are maybe also in some cases on a different journey. Mm. It could be uh, say a solution uh, success factor has been there for years, mm. so they're they're not moving in that area, right? Yeah. Um, they're already they're in a different pa- pace. They're in a different platform. They're in a in a SaaS solution instead of on prem. Yeah, yeah. But still, you have options to adapt yeah. also in a SaaS solution, right? Yeah. So I mean, so one thing is the user interface, but um, but these RISEFs that that uh, that comes along, change requests from the business. I mean, m- might actually involve the entire stack, I guess. So so what are the governance rules in in your department on on uh, on let's say evaluating? Uh, can we do? This standard by bringing in some sort of Fury app or some functionality, or do we need to change? And if so, how do we change? We actually try to avoid uh, cherry picking wherever we can, so we don't launch stand uh, well standard apps one at a time uh, because it goes by role. But we look into the role. That's a governing process around it. But there is a good good question in the th- sense that if you have a business requirement that you actually evaluate whether Fury is, now Fury is one part of it, but it could also be that we just looking at plain CDSs and so forth, mm-hmm. that we actually take the chance to refactor. Mm-hmm. That would be a case-by-case case dependency because you don't break a user journey in the current GUI. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, you can do that, but uh, um, that's not of anybody's interest, I believe. Mm-hmm. So if it's massively, depending on the GUI, then we uh, still continue until we can take a larger chunk and say, okay, now that's Fury, Candidate, yeah. um. well, you have, you have mentioned that a couple of times the business rule and that was introduced with the Fiori coming in and I know SAP provides several business rules. Have you been able to use those or have you combined your own business rules, being controller or supply chain that you see the world differently or how how, how have you worked with? That? Can you? Exp- uh, elaborate on a business rule. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, roles. Uh, uh, roles. Uh, okay, yeah. uh, it's my bad English. Sorry. <laughs> no, okay, yeah, <laughs> no worries. Yeah. Um, so, were the ben- were the business roles from SAP <laughs> beneficials <laughs> for you, or or you constructed your own because you're? Uh, uh, we we stick by the uh, by the business role from SAP in the sense that they c- that actually uh, goes hand in hand by, for instance, an approval app and a request app. Well. Yeah needs to go hand in hand. Mm-hmm. Without a, a, an approval, you can, well, then the request doesn't matter, right? Yeah. Um, I think that's the best p- part of it, That I, well, the way I can explain yeah, it. Yeah, it depends yeah. on cases uh, it's as a well. Case by case, uh, but in some cases, it makes good sense to use them. It ma- yeah. Yep. Still, but I would like to dig a little bit into this case by case. Uh, I mean, of course, we cannot as such uh, uh, open up con- c- completely, but I mean, you could establish, I guess, some sort of decision tree on this type of, uh, um, let's say, request would mandate this type of solution uh, uh, component. But what? How do you decide? What? What is? Is there a a board that approves, uh, let's say, design principles from the developers, or how, how? How? What is the approach to 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 let's say create? the uh, the uh, add-ons or changes in the right way? And here we utilize our normal process of uh, governance, but in the sense of deciding whether to go for Fury or not, that's based on uh, collaboration between uh, the business consultant, functional consultants and the developers mm. together, the architects around that. Yeah. We are pushing it a bit forward now from a technical point of view and say, okay, now we at least want to do whatever we do, even if it's on uh, on so to speak, the old platform GUI, mm-hmm. then set tables need to be CDS views instead and utilized yeah. like that. So we are preparing for, okay, eventually, that if that development needs to exist in a Fury world as well, then at least the uh, the foundation is in place. Yeah. But there's no strict governance around, okay, now we go for Fury and that one. I think that comes with, uh, based on 
the business uh, sort of the business process and how how uh, how heavily you cha- you want to change it mm-hmm. then it, that would call for an assessment of your yeah. but uh, yeah. a- again if you take the individual case you're you're back to cherry picking mm-hmm. and um we would like to avoid that yeah, yeah okay o- on that note i mean your team that you have i mean have you, have you worked and enabled them or your partner that that we would like to that you consider the SAP's way of extending you mentioned said table CDS views i mean it's the skill sets to to yeah. to know about uh, the new SAP we have upskilled ourselves in, i'm not sure i fully on but i'll try to answer yeah. anyway um <laughs> i've upskilled we have upskilled our skills in my department in terms of uh, set tables and uh, be needing to be CDS views and so yeah. forth but uh, we are that that's our own choice how we do that yeah. right But I also do see a need going forward that functional consultants might need to n- know a bit more about CDS views and what's in it. Mm. Uh, it will be a need in order to, for instance, API APIs exposing those, mm. understanding what it is you expose. So it will be mm. there is a requirement for more technical in depth insight. Maybe it's not that different from what they. It might seem s- sound scary, but in the sense that they, if they know set tables. Mm, the CDS views could be treated equivalent. It's just called something different. Same purpose for the scene from that perspective. So knowing where to get the uh, information from and knowing where they uh, because I, I guess I mean if we meet some old timers, they can drop table names in SAP. Uh, some years uh, exactly what they are called and mm-hmm. how they are linked together. I mean. Same kind of mindset needs yeah. to go into the CDS views. Where are those? Where production orders are and mm. purchase orders? And, and does and SAP and provide standard CDSs? Yeah. Yes. So <coughs> yeah. And, let's and that's a learning journey, but we're and we are growing on it. Yeah. Um, so so coming back then to the BTP. Now we've talked as far quite a lot. So so BTP is there, uh, I guess now also as a tool to both integrate solutions, but also to augment solutions, uh, and and that is actually also on the full stack. And there you have the opportunity to use AppUp, so the uh, the BTP AppUp environment, uh, but also Java and JavaScript uh, uh, methodologies there. Is that something that that you? I guess it is. But can you elaborate a little bit on 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 how you explore that? And yeah, and well, um, the B2B platforms comes from four pillars. If, if we concentrate around the uh, in- extension suite and the integration suite, then the ex- integration suite we have taken in quite heavily, mm. in the sense that that was that is the uh, the place to be for integration going forward, seen from our perspective, and that th- therefore we are moving uh, heavily on that. Cloud extensions in the in- extension suite we have just recently uh, started on that, and that's still a journey for us um, to to uh, to engage in that. Whereas we have had the Fury journey that's uh, yeah. some years ago. Mm-hmm. That yeah. now we have quite a few apps r- up and running, most of them standard, uh, and some uh, well also a few uh, quite a few uh, along the way on custom apps, but. Um, On the cloud extensions, we had just recently started, so that's okay. a brand new journey for us. I see a great perspective in this because that can potentially uh, make it possible for us to go cross domains uh, technically, meaning that uh, it is easier for us to collaborate with a Java developer or even take in Java development ourselves, mm. um, knowing that everyone has their religion about their platform <laughs> but uh, at least we start talking the same language we start working by the same models yeah. um thing about uh, well it's been there for years in java that we that's my background right uh that you separate the ui from the logic and that's the journey that sap is uh, started with the s4 yeah yeah as well they implemented it mm-hmm. so yeah. that that is something we can now utilize Mm. And combine for that matter UIs cross platforms. Mm. Now, careful what you want. Uh, you also need to be careful about what you do because ma- mixing everything up also um, can get spaghetti. Yeah, that, uh, that gets a, a little complicated, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But has Complex. I mean, so 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 that means you can you can cross the aisle, so to speak, and and start to to attract talent that uh, that may not know uh, the SAP world, but but knows how to code in. In let's say 
both open source but also Java uh, languages. Yeah, at least it opened up the door that we we mentioned the uh, student workers in yeah. the step program, sub techno- technology education program that we just recently com- yesterday completed. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> at your place, um, that opens up the door that they students or for that matter colleagues um, will recognize the tools they're used to using. Mm. And that makes the onboarding a little easier. Mm. There's still a lot because uh, the SAP world is, um, well, SAP is big Mm. um, and therefore there's a learning journey. But it opens, uh, well, earlier you would not see that transfer uh, as easy as that. So I think we are opening the door for, um, for having new talents in easier. I mean, uh, as you, you mentioned yourself, APIs uh, um, in, in, in S4. I mean, the way we document these APIs, I think, has also improved a lot. And the way you utilize those, I mean, anyone can actually uh, uh, get access to an SAP system through the right API to get, uh, to get the things done properly. You don't have to go and, and, and code on table level to get, to get things done. No, there are standard ones, but that, that also combines it with the rest. Well, SAP towards SAP is really, really great, strong. Mm-hmm. Now we start combining it with the rest of the world as well, right? And uh, here, API uh, APIs can be done in many different ways, but we're looking into how can we harmonize. Uh, so we, when we expose uh, to partners uh, that we do it in a professional way, that's what we are looking at across the platforms. So it potentially can be seamless. And well documented. Okay, <laughs> good, good. And yeah. and, <laughs> and are you using uh, the B2B platform for, for this purpose? We are, we s- well, on API management, we started this year. So we are, yeah. yes, doing, um, I would still call it POCs. We're utilizing it yeah. in an SAP context. Yeah, okay. But when we look in the broader context, it's still to be said, wh- who, how do we do it cross platforms? Mm. So it's in a fairly early stage just yet. Um on API management. What we're moving on it. Then now, now uh, quite uh, quite popular uh, and discussed at some customer is this event based uh, backbones uh, with APIs. Is that something that you are using? No, not or yet. Could, no. No, because but it is there. I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and and uh, the, this interest of an event, mm. an order has been created, and and then then we consume uh, the order and. Uh, those kind of things. Yes. Yep. And we're looking into it, but it's not, we well, it's an early, really early stage just yet. Yep. And sub event mesh is not utilized yet, nope. just yet. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but obviously it, it we have other, other things for that right yeah, now, but yeah. that's some other things that we need to, uh, we, well, the history behind it because the consolidation of the platforms that triggers events that needs mm-hmm. to be in place before we do implement a new platform on top of that. And then the question would be, what platform is that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But speaking of integration, I mean, you do use Integration Suite, I understand. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Is that your s- sort of main integration tool? Are you all done with a PI migration or? <coughs> no, we're not uh, done with the PI migration just yet. The end goal is, uh, seen from our perspective, yes, to uh, move everything into PTP. Mm. We have a, ra- well, depending on how, who you ask, but we have a rather big uh, PI installation. So that's quite a few scenarios that w- I would reckon takes uh, some years mm. to migrate. Uh, and yes, we, we have started that. Ju- we are on BTP. We do that f- uh, for anything new, but we have um, quite a bit on P- PI that we we want to move into BTP. Yeah. Or yeah. the integration suite. And so, yeah, okay. yeah and uh, in the space of integration, where does your volume of integration lands? Is it uh, towards legacy systems or is it do you have a lot of suppliers and banks and and customers that you're integrating where is mostly yeah, your integrations uh, well that's a difficult question mm-hmm. to answer because that depends on how you measure that yeah. um in the, if you me- measure in, say, in message sizes then it's internal uh, system to system uh, if we measure it in integrations uh, scenarios then it's uh, more towards yeah also well outside world as well yeah okay so you're an old timer you have had integrations on sap platform for quite some time at least the period of time i've been here yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> okay so then i would say it's a long time yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, integration suite so you are you are in progress uh, migrating from pi to integration suite what was the uh, 
original reasoning for, for introducing integration tree because SAP said that this is the way to go if you have PO or... And the the original one was the uh, implementation of our cloud solutions. And here the recommendation was that there's preloaded content on uh, integration suite and we could also see that that was intended to be the integration uh, the integration platform going forward. So it was a natural choice for us to say, okay, at least we now do the... Uh, is for to cloud integrate uh, to sub cloud integrations uh, by having the preloaded content, but also in, uh, here investing in okay, what does that mean for us? What are the capabilities uh, that we can utilize? Mm. It's changed names over the years, <laughs> but uh, we started with AC, what was it? HCI, yeah, and a cloud, cloud integration, integration. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then a couple of names later, we turned into integration <laughs> suite. Um, And by the way, a couple of migrations during last year from Neo to Cloud Foundry, mm. Cloud Foundry to the integration suite. So it's moving, but um, and we are we are looking at it as a primary platform going forward. Okay. Question about time. I mean, uh, we we often uh, uh, have discussions with clients that that would like to transition from PI into something else because, as you know, PI or PO mm. has an end of life in 27 potentially 2030, they are then assessing, okay, or trying to assess what will be the volume of work needed uh, to migrate to integration suite. But I somehow sense that you didn't take that approach. You sort of decided this is the strategic tool. And then we, as we build new stuff, we build it on that. And then from time to time, you bring in stuff from PI, or is there a project in place to sort of do the migration Um, there's a project, so to speak, in place um, in the sense that it, we, we actually had a migration to PO uh, planned and executing on it. Uh, and this year we changed uh, that perspective and said, okay, now we stop that project and go to directly because we think we can mm -hmm. do it uh, directly to B2B. Yeah. So that part of it is in shaping right now. It's already started in some sense that we have migrated uh, some, we have started out some things quite a few things on the uh, BTP but uh, we have quite a few we have quite a road ahead of us okay <laughs> but that started yes um then then just i guess it's difficult to say but uh, but i'll try in any case to ask whether whether your developers see a productivity gains by moving from pi to integration suite or is it same same a difficult question in the sense that that depends on well you, when you're moving from a mature platform to a I wouldn't call it <laughs> immature because then it would be a wi wrong choice to pick it right now yeah. but we have a, uh, well we have some experience during the period of time we have had the cloud solutions for uh, I don't know three four years or five years or something like that but not heavily as we have had with PI we are mm. quite firm on PI so mm. calling it easier to move to the new platform no it's a new set of tools yeah But we also see, and that goes for PI as well, we have seen a need for supplementing with additional tooling. And here we also utilize um, for monitoring, for instance, we, we supplement it by Azure and yeah. also take advantage of the Adf uh, Azure platform for when we expose our, uh, our SAP system to the outside world. Mm. Okay. So we use elements of that. So yeah. I think it's also for me uh, and My, my architects that we go SAP mm -hmm. with SAP but we also have the option and the uh, opportunities to utilize a different pl platform so we are more flexible and adaptive to whatever demand that comes going ahead uh, one one I mean one of the things that we pride ourselves on at SAP is the uh, multitude of content packages that that is available not just for integration but also for for all other areas um, is that uh, a, a true sort of accelerator uh, um, in 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 your development efforts so to which yeah. extent would you say that you actually use this content preloaded content obviously yeah. and that actually works quite smoothly there's no success factor that was implemented just uh, okay. no that was actually on pi for starters but anyways yeah. um <laughs> But yeah, I, I do see that that comes without effort, so to speak. The development as such, mm, some things are better, some things are uh, more efficient. And as we go along, then uh, I expect also the tool will uh, will embrace um, capabilities that we see in PI, 
IPO right now, and also I would imagine c- comes on top of that uh, additional functionalities mm. and more better ways of doing things. Yeah. yeah. And again, it relates to now we can start utilizing common tools with other colleagues from other platforms like uh, Git systems and so forth, and that's uh, not something we've been Used. collaborating on before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I see some synergies in that, both yeah. on BTP, but also for that matter on the extension suite. Yeah, yeah. yeah speaking of mm-hmm. of that kind of tooling, GitHub and uh, and uh, and CI/CD, then yeah. also, I mean, how have you? Are you? We discussed it briefly, but are you better at uh, continuously developing and integrating into your your solutions uh, integration jobs? Or yeah, is that is that eased with? Uh, I don't know. Pipelines, the ICD pipelines, perhaps. Uh, uh, we are we are not there yet yeah. in that sense, uh, so I can't answer that. Okay. Uh, uh, to be uh, fully honest, uh, but but I mean, okay, but deploying uh, it's it's nowhere it's not easier as it used to be deploying new solutions, or have you established a process that that is let's say allowing you to at a faster pace introduce new functionality. I think the pace as such is fast enough as it is, yeah. but um, in the sense that I do see that as we go along that there will be synergies cross, especially cro- when you look at cross platforms, there are, when you have a common development, uh, sorry, deployment tool available, then it, that will be easier. Mm. Uh, d- mm. Have we had the need yet? Mm, not yet. No, okay. But uh, so w- within the SAP platform, no, no bigger change, but when you start looking across and uh, I do, Based on the history of Java, I had, then there need to be some. There will be some synergies in that because we can combine that yeah. in the same tooling. Yeah, on on that note, uh, uh, controlling your changes when you're changing. Are you using any of those SAP tools like Solution Manager or uh, to control your change, or are you doing the change control? Uh, we. We have a uh, change control in, uh, we're utilizing Sulu's manager, yes. Um, we're looking into Calm now. Mm-hmm. Um, and yes, we, ju- we do have governance around our changes yeah. in that sense. Um, because but Sulu's manager is not covering the cloud as such. No. So, and that's actually been a challenge for us in terms of documenting Fury, documenting these kind of things, uh, the, the BTP um, changes that we do. That uh, that is uh, that is uh, well not su- not in solution and that I would potentially be in calm, mm. and that's just recently been made available uh, as such for us. So um, yeah, and 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 speaking on that, we 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 just uh, the other week had a podcast with one uh, cloud ALM calm uh, person, and he starts really now to feel that it's becoming mature. It is. It it has been a journey with uh, cloud ALM, and and uh, but it is the choice for that SAP is pointing towards operation monitoring. One thing, implementing. There is a catch up game. Uh, and the interesting part here, we started out twenty four years ago when we started the, this podcast, and now we are into uh, the last three four months or so when we <laughs> visited. Uh, well, our basis department visited. Uh, SAP in the name of Calm. Yeah. Um, so that also tells you, oh, I would imagine, where we are in that journey. That mm-hmm. yes, we have seen the toolbox, mm-hmm. we have opened the toolbox in Confos, but we have not uh, started to. Uh, um, uh, that's within weeks, then mm-hmm. months uh, that we have started to uh, get, uh, well connect the wires and so forth. So that's where we are. Yeah. Speaking of uh, new tools, uh, also part of the discussion yesterday when the students visited the Experience Center in Copenhagen was uh, no-code tools uh, So for development. Mm -hmm. We had a little bit of a discussion there. I remember the students said that uh, such tools could actually be efficient even for pro developers. Um, What's your take on that? Is that something you are embracing uh, here? Yes and no, (laughs) in the sense that there are, well... I see the beauty of uh, low code, no code. Um, we're not doing assembler anymore. It's yeah, level yeah, up, we're right? Stepping up, yeah. Um, and low code, that's may- maybe low code, no code. That's maybe the next step and something we can get. Uh, well, that can enable function consultant business users to actually do what is equivalent to uh, development. 
the point is, ba- uh, is back to that that doesn't change the facts around that you need to have um, competence in order to do that. What is it you're building? How critical is it? Do you have your governance process around it in place? Mm-hmm. And that's not necessarily technical things. That's uh, capabilities that you need as an organization to mm-hmm. uh, to have in place. So let's imagine you do as a low code, no code, and that for starters is nice for you. You show it to colleagues. It starts maturing and starts spreading. That's super great, right? But what about support uh, in service desk? How do you make sure that your functional consultants who is in Grundfos is taking part in the business development and show uh, creating awareness of what is possible? Then you there is the risk that you ba- you basically have a lack of support because uh, you didn't you were not aware of that particular things. There mm. can be security issues. So I think here we also in IS we need to embrace it. We need to learn. Uh, we need to know what it is. So we can also recommend uh, and uh, consult our business on when you utilize this, be aware of this and this and this. If you implement critical things that goes for anything, then you need your coverage in place. And having one person being able to support it is not sufficient if it's business critical. Mm -hmm. There need to be more. And then it starts uh, showcasing why we have a support service disk, why we have operations, why we have all these things in place that we do for normal things that is when you have a small solution that grows big, right? Then these things need to be in place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And having a collaboration with business and awareness of these matters, um, then I think, yes, we are, it's easier to um, give, so to speak, I wouldn't call it freedom, but because I think that's <laughs> the counter word of a not, not allowed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but actually, well, creating the uh, synergies that we are we're in it together uh, and we have each our competences as organizations yeah so let's help let's help business getting it done right yeah mm. yeah. yeah empower them empower them but mm. also when it starts being that's uh, i think everyone working in it can relate to this when it starts being things that needs to be maintained things that need to be tested Mm. Then the interest sort of suddenly drops, <laughs> right? Mark- marketing, um, yes. <laughs> and that's where well, that's our job also yeah. to take responsibility for that that it works afterwards. Yeah. So if you have something business critical, you you're done yourself, you're proud of it, and so forth, mm. and you start utilizing an organization, be aware. Then we need as an organization to be aware that okay, this is now becoming critical. So if that person leaves, we need to make sure that it's anchored in the right places. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And uh, we should embrace it. We should do it, and uh, also learn from it. Yeah. What can we do? What can't we do? Yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, no code. I'm sure is there to stay, but uh, but do it in a way that uh, ins- assures yeah. that uh, that proper governance is in place. And, and a small thing for you in SAP, then it would be nice that low code, no code actually comes with a c- development extension. So, whenever these features are not possible to meet with the low code, no code, that we can enhance it with development that's currently not as far mm. as I know possible so it's yeah. either if you can't meet the business requirement as is you need to de- develop from scratch and that's actually a little bit of a pain right mm. it's at least hard to explain that uh, you nice work but since you you actually need this field or this functionality yeah we need to build the entire application from scratch okay and is that's that really uh, the case well, well in but some cases <laughs> yeah it, well it goes fast so yeah. it can also yeah. be that it's changed since Last time we checked, but uh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. at least one one of the things that. Uh, okay, that's one 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 re- rec- one key recommendation. That would be nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. we bring it on. We, we bring it. We yeah. bring it with us. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I mean, speaking of of, uh, I mean, I I kind of like pro code more, but uh, but I I. As part it's because of you're so old. Ah, yeah, yeah, true, true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that old. No. But but uh, I I saw on Sapphire. Well, no, actually, I didn't see it. I, I wasn't there, and I didn't see the replays. But I read about it, and apparently, um, apparently, generative AI uh, and AI as such was a big topic, as as I'm sure it is all over the place. Uh, and and at S- and and at Sapphire we presented a series of solutions that are built into S4 and other tools uh, that that actually leverages AI uh, actively. But uh, I also saw a prototype there that that would allow developers to use uh, generative AI uh, uh, in a smart manner, in the sense that you could have 
the let's say majority of the code generated by 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 means of a description of what the app should do and then you get the majority of the code for a fury app presented and i'm kind of thinking if you have that and it really works then you skip the no code tooling and go directly to just mm-hmm. talking to the development tool yeah we actually well it's interesting now we mentioned we were with you yesterday yesterday and actually one of the students has graduated with doing a, a masters in with Grundfassasse case for AI used in development. Um, Super. And it raises quite a, uh, quite some questions as well, in the sense that there, there are some um, things to take into mind. Uh, one of the things I think, it's still, for all of us, I believe it's uh, absolutely there. It's been there actually for years, uh, many years, but now starting being something everyone understands as well, to, uh, or at least know. And in the development context, yes, it makes sense. Uh, also being careful that it's still in a shape where if you expose what you want to develop, you're also exposing what you want to do business-wise. And there can be confidentialities in that. There can be things you need to con- t- take into consideration. Same thing goes for utilizing AI in a business context. But both cases, um, it needs to be something that's in control. And that's uh, also why I... Ex- expect and rely on that SAP will incorporate that. So it mm. can be done in a way where I can, well, my developer, my team, or my colleagues can utilize these uh, functionalities, but not published. No. Mm. In your context. You and you have done that. For, we're, we've done AI for years, embedded right. in SAP. Yeah. It's nothing. There's nothing new in predictive analytics and so forth in that sense, because that's been there for years. Mm-hmm. I would also expect this one to be incorporated. So as a, for instance, as a part of the, for my team, as a part of the development tool that you can, uh, in principle, ask the question, can you move a file from A to B utilizing SFTP? Please provide me a program that can do that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that we have seen, that works. Yeah, um, yeah that needs to, you need to be skilled enough to read what it is and, and also things that might not be fully there. Mm. Uh, but eventually, yes, it will be uh, more effective, and especially in cases where you're new to an, an area, then you can get hints or things like it can support you. Mm-hmm. But similar as you've searched, if you search on Google, uh, we can all relate to that. If I do a search on Google, it might not be the first one that answers me my question, no. the first link. It can be take a couple of iterations. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Yeah. And, and the same thing goes here. You need to know what you're looking for and understand it. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and it's a new skill set. I mean, we have had Google for 20 years. We have learned how the pattern, how to use it, when it makes good sense. And yeah. I guess this is where we are. Yeah. So they, they, this prompt engineering is the new thing. This yeah. is what you need to be. <laughs> ah, the black prompt is coming back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think it actually, say, there are some truth in it that there are, Ha- maintaining the core ca- capability of knowing what you're talking about, yeah. knowing what your technologies is about, mm. that remains even more important. Mm. Um, but it makes it easier. Mm. And it makes it more, maybe more uh, easy for n- new, per- new uh, colleagues or newcomers to the area to join in uh, because can ask. And, and, and I guess we, we have all tested our chat GPT and Absolutely. got some silly answers, but we have also uh, done it and got excellent answers. Yes. And, and that's why, and that those who decide that, you need to have a skill to, to judge that. Here's the downside, at least that when I tried it the first, I said, well, utilizing things from 2021 and backwards, and that's actually too old. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, <laughs> that become evident that when when we talk about uh, especially for instance uh, CPI to integration suite, yeah. well, yeah. Uh, not there. No. Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, you need to use the large language models, but on 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 more recent data, of course. So embedded in the technology, so that where where the the data is, the data mm. that matters actually mm. is. That's that's that I guess is is the key. But I do see a, po- a potential in uh, having it embedded in in development tools, yeah. uh, making mm. things easier. Yeah. Okay, it's um, it's I mean it's, it's getting close to the end. I guess uh, we've been talking for a while on development uh, and 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 also methodologies there. As I, I went into this building, I, I realized that I've been here before. Some some seven eight years ago, I was here uh, at a meeting with Grundfos discussing some IoT 
uh, initiatives that that you were embarking on. I'm sure you have progressed a long way uh, down that line. Uh, uh, and that also reminds me of yesterday when we talked about business transformation with the students there. So where are you at Grundfos in terms of transitioning from a product-oriented business to a service-oriented business, if that's your strategy, actually? And in what way does that affect uh, SAP and s 4 It's a, well. It it still is uh, um, the strategy, but uh, also been for years. Mm. Um, it is um, a market that's involving as well, but it, it's also hard to get moving from um, having being a product oriented, uh, not for grown for such, but also for the market to adapt. So okay, mm. similar. I would actually uh, compare it to when we moved from on prem to cloud credits, mm. consumption based. <laughs> It can be. It is. A, it is tough to to get into that new business model. Actually, also may, in some cases maybe accepting that's mm. how it is, and maybe it's out of con- some of the things you would consider in the very beginning out of control in the sense that, yeah, but then I can use unlimited cloud credits and get the bill for it, mm. Mm. and that's true. <laughs> uh, that's a part of the journey, um, mm. and that's a maturity journey. We are well. We need to embrace it as yeah. well. Yeah need to make the wise choices so back to the product um part of it mm, that's been uh, an ongoing thing for confos for years uh, so don't i don't see that as, as a change as such that's something that's been there and something yeah, that's yeah. supported but i do see it in in the sense of confos and uh, sap and microsoft in terms of uh, now we're buying a service rather than having a platform in the basement mm-hmm. uh, in many cases but i'll also see that uh, it's a combination a hybrid of that okay So you already alluded to uh, one point that we could do better at SAP, uh, um, namely uh, ensuring that you can extend the tools uh, so that you don't have to code from the scratch. Yeah, but, but I would also say when we move on the B2B platform and the engagement and the way of we have been collaborating with SAP on this has actually been quite positive in the sense we, when we moved into B2B and the uh, CPA agreement and these kind of things, then we get we have a close collaboration because there are, that's also a... Um, believe I'm mean, fair to say it's a maturity journey for yourself as well so yeah. these things about financial operations uh finops we call it and the way we co- we control do financial controlling on the uh, cpa agreement that's easy and in microsoft environment but it's here is uh, slightly different um but also so, uh, one of the things i have a close collaboration with sap on we are now building an app that can alert us on that <laughs> uh which has been in collaboration with your guys as well because it's a it's a common interest for mm. customers i believe and we are we're working on that still we need to be in control of our cloud creators <laughs> <laughs> yeah. use them wisely yeah. yeah no but i mean yeah, we do the same of course i mean all of us have the opportunity to create an azure account uh, uh, but then once we do that we also need to sort of uh, Control the cost. Yeah, exactly, and and we need to yeah. to sort of look at the emails we const- constantly get. You know, are you sure that you are using this uh, and this and this and so so? Yeah. So one th- one of the concerns when you move into that is that you, uh, what would it cost running? It, the initial cost actually is fairly low to m- in many cases, and sometimes yes, expensive, but fairly low in general. But what will it cost over time? That can be a re- uh, factor that actually can create resilience right now that we need to embrace and uh, also for me to uh, talk to my colleagues here. Yeah, this one is actually easy, uh, low cost and so forth. This one costs you the more. Mm. And the point is basically, th- if that's the challenge now, earlier that was the challenge that we needed to buy hardware. Now we get within a day from signing the contract, we more or less get the service. And in some cases where we have B2B, when we have the B2B platform, we can just enable them and then mm. we start paying So that's a new thing that we need to get used to. It does take a couple of months to get hardware and licenses mm. negotiated mm. in place. That's already done. So now the challenge is more like, how do we then make sure that uh, now this can be done, but have we actually evaluated the cost and uh, is the business case valid? What will, what will be the running cost of this? Mm. Mm. So that's what we are w- looking at right now, B2B governance. Yeah. And then fueling, that's the main topics for us. The B2B governance, utilizing that cloud journey, And then fueling talents. Mm. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, it's, it's, I, I'm just thinking, I, I have the same conversation at home at the kitchen table sometimes uh, with the, all the apps that the kids have, have been using. I am in control of the finance department. They are utilizing. And so I'm <laughs> asking, what, what, what do you have? Uh, what are you? And I can centrally control that. What abonnement are they having? Mm. And seeing mm. the cost, are you using this? Is it worth spending this 15 kronor per month on this one? Yeah. But, yeah. but it's, uh, it's, a, it's a shift one needs to... They can argue that it's really good, I really need this. Okay, yeah. then... And I think when we look at these uh, going forward, uh, well, now we have a lot of options which also create complexity mm. that we will also see that that will consolidate, but also move as we go along, as it is always done. But now, yeah, we're always saying it goes faster, but I think that it, it actually does now, but we also need to co- cope with it as people, mm-hmm. business-wise processes and cha- change processes, uh, changing processes, um, coping with new ways of working, that we will actually maybe be see that limiting factor will be ourselves rather than now we can just launch it, right? But do we also want that? Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, true, true. Yes. Launching new functionalities we have seen all over the place. So, well, are we actually there that we can cope with the fact that, okay, now there's a new one, and then there's a new one. Do we then change our business processes, or what do we do? Exactly, mm. yeah. Yeah. So there might come a re- re-reaction on that one. <laughs> that could be, could be, let's have some stability and, and, and do things like we used to, yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, What's uh, what's installed for the future then? I mean, do you have any any exciting new projects coming up uh, at Gonfors? Yeah, um, we have we we have the uh, we're looking into quite a few uh, quite a few of the new uh, um, SAP SaaS platforms as well. Uh, Sorry, and SAP SaaS uh, uh, cloud solutions. Yeah, yeah SaaS solutions. Yep. Um, and the potential in these. Uh, I know we are right now talking to you about that as well. We have quite a few of them already, uh, Success Factor, IBP, Concur, and so forth. Uh, but we are, we're looking right now, when you ask about projects, into new commercial core. What mm. would that be? Would that be uh, wh- which platforms will be involved in that? Uh, which services? Mm. And where to put them? Yeah. Um, supply chain, same thing. Uh, I would also imagine finance coming up. Mm. Um, and there's a lot of other uh, things that we're launching right now. Oh, so, okay. mm. so I'm looking into a fairly busy second half year. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on that note, then uh, thanks a lot, Jakob, for, for sharing your insights from Grundfos. This uh, was really interesting. Um, yeah, really interesting. It's been a pleasure, yeah. and I hope it can be used. I'm sure it can. Uh, thanks a lot for your time. Thank you, too. This was another episode of Data Lab Dialogues. We'll be back shortly. Thank you.